Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords. And today I'm doing a review of No Rest for the Wicked, uh, an adventure for Lamentations of the Flame Princess, written by J. Stuart Pate. <laughs> and uh, No Rest for the Wicked is, as you can see, a small volume. It's one of the latest batch of um, Lamentations adventures that were sent to me for review. It's only about 32 pages long. I've got it here to provide a comparison with my my other my small print uh, sized books. So like the Old School Companion, the Old School Companion Volume 2, World of the Last Sun. You can check all of those out in any of my other products. Uh, you'll see links in the descriptions below. Uh, Lion and Dragon, Dark Albion, <laughs> Sword and Caravan. There's so many. It's a lot to name. Uh, then the RPG Pundit presents PDF series. So if you want to support me, then uh, be sure to check out my products. Uh, it's the best way to um, financially support me in my in my videos and whatnot. Uh, I mean, you can if you really aren't into RPGs at all, or you've bought every single book I have, you can always check out my Patreon page. But uh, if you haven't. I recommend that you check out purchasing my products because if you're a gamer, you're going to find that they're really full of great stuff to use and uh, totally gameable. And that's a great way for both of us to win. So uh, check those out. Also, if you end up liking this video, please uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Thanks to everyone who's already bought stuff. Now, the question is, is No Rest for the Wicked a product that you would also want to buy? So... Lamentations of the Flame Princess is a, it's a very interesting product line in some ways because it started out obviously with the rule book, right? The Lamentations book, which had an emphasis originally on weird fantasy, right? The earliest version of Lamentations of the Flame Princess was still using most of the, the hallmarks of kind of medieval fantasy D&D &D with a much grittier edge, of course, than, than the standard D&D. And with a bunch of, you know, um, James Raggy's ideas about what weird fantasy is supposed to be. Um, but very quickly, mainly through the adventures, the, the shift of the kind of assumed setting of Lamentations changed. Because a lot, a lot of the adventures for Lamentations are set, as No Rest for the Wicked is, in the 17th century, so quite a bit later, uh, it's not even it's not medieval. It's it's almost not even Renaissance. At the very end of the Renaissance, and the beginning of what what historians um, call the 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 early modern period, you know, so it's it's a different era. And uh, specifically, a lot of them are set around the wars of religion that happened on the continent of Europe at the time. The, a lot of them are literally just set in Europe. Um, albeit, of course, with magic and stuff, similar to what I do with with my Lion and Dragon uh, books, um, relying a little bit less. Uh, mine tend to rely more on elements of legend, folklore, and myth, as well as history. Um, Lamentations uses a lot from actual history, from historical events, but its fantasy side has very little to do with um, contemporary from that era legends or folklore or uh, myths or what have you. Instead, they like introduce these weird monsters and monstrosities and, and, and uh, things that are in some ways a little anachronistic. However, Rest for the Wicked is no Rest for the Wicked is very interesting in that sense too, in that it is an adventure that has no supernatural elements at all. It's, there's no magic involved, no, no monsters. This is about essentially a human conflict. So this product is 32 pages long. It's hardcover, as you can see, which is an interesting choice for, for a very small book, but it, it works. I mean, it looks all right physically, right? Uh, the interior, as you can see, is all in black and white. Now, some of the products that have, that have, have been out in this latest batch are not in black and white. So this is, I think, more of an aesthetic choice than anything else. You can see the art is of a very particular style um, that kind of, I think, fits the tone of the adventure. Uh, the adventure itself has to do with 
the uh, the year is 1632, as you can see, Wars of Religion in Gulf Europe. And basically, it's it's set up with the player characters going to stay the night at some place, at an inn or whatever. And they end up getting caught up in a conflict, an interpersonal conflict related to the Wars of Religion. And there's tremendous violence and bloodshed ensues in a in a quest for uh not so much justice as revenge you know and and just brutal hatred um you get a whole timeline of events as they occur um and a lot of elements about characters the the people this is a this is a people-based adventure right what essentially it does is it has a place the inn which is you know, important mainly as just the setting. And then it has um, the, the dramatis personae. There we go. That's perfect. <laughs> right on time. So uh, what it has is a number of characters, all of which have their own particular motives, secrets, and what have you. Um, and all of which are doomed in this adventure to get embroiled in horrific violence, you know. Um, the adventure is also very interesting in that essentially the PCs are there by default. They're, they're almost as spectators, right? Now that doesn't mean that they can't do stuff. Of course they can do stuff. They, you know, it's, and it's left very much open-ended as to what they do, right? Like the, this is not also a, an adventure that has a, it's not a moral allegory uh, where there's clearly good guys and clearly bad guys. This isn't a group of people that show up and abuse innocence, right? It's a it's a group of people, uh, two groups of people that are caught up in conflict related to the horrific continental wars of the 17th century, um, and and there's not really, as it is, an ideal course for the characters to go through, right? It's very morally gray in some ways because it, it, the, the, you know, the, the player characters can interact in any particular way. Um, it's very much in that sense, like a, a sandbox, you could say. And, but there's not really like the right or the wrong way for them to interact. And in fact, it's totally possible that the players say, we don't want to have anything to do with this, do nothing, and events play out. And, and they play out potentially without any consequence to the player characters themselves. So, you know, it's a very unusual adventure. Now, um, in some ways, I mean, it's obviously a totally different genre, well, in, in, in many ways, but it you can know, this this adventure with some changes could be set you know as a western story or as something that happens in the US civil war or something like that right like it's it's um it's got a lot of similarity to you know these uh especially you know in the 90s and 2000s onwards the treatment of of sort of western stories as these violence filled revenge stories where where there isn't necessarily a good or a bad person you know <laughs> and uh you know it, it's it, so it, your players if the players like that sort of thing then they might be drawn to it as far as the the utility for a dm okay so this can be played obviously if you're running a campaign set during the wars of religion in the 1630s in the continent of Europe. Uh, if you're not running that, then it'll require some important amount of conversion, right? It's got to be set in a place where there is, where, where um, the conditions are war-torn and the amount of modification you have to do will depend on just how different those war-torn conditions are from the particularities of the the protestant catholic conflicts in europe in the 17th century so there's there could be quite a lot that you would have to change to make it fit right like it would not be immediately portable into like a you know the sword coast in the forgotten realms or something like that um so the practicality of this product 
is a bit limited, you could say. Like, I mean, you could you could use it as a broad framework that you would have to heavily modify to fit into, say, a fantasy world. And it would even be not as easy because there are some of these products that, that Lamentations does that are set in the 17th century in Europe that if I, you know, if I get a hold of some of them, I can pretty easily convert them into a story that could be set in the um, 15th century in Europe, right? And it wouldn't make a big difference, especially, you know, it could be, you could put it into 15th century England in the, in the, the War of the Roses and it, and it would more or less fit. But um, this one, I don't think I'd want to bother to do that, <laughs> to be honest. And I'm not saying that the adventure is bad. It's a very specific type of genre. And if you like that genre, um, it, it can be, it'll be interesting. Um, in a way, the, the fact that the PCs are completely free in terms of what they, they choose to do or how they choose to react to events can be good if your player characters like that. On the other hand, the fact that essentially, oh, look who's here. It's Meatball. Hey, Meatball. You were eating some tuna, weren't you? That's what those noises were before. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny how uh, anytime I do a rant video, uh, you see, you know, Meatball gets on top of the, the, the microwave there, and she usually has this scowling look like she's, uh, she's expressing her joint contempt with me about uh, whatever stupid thing the wokists are doing. Whereas if I'm doing a review video, inevitably she wants to come and sit on the books. I'm not sure what that means, but it's a fact. <laughs> so anyhow, um, as far as I'm concerned, right, like it's not a bad adventure, but it's an adventure that, that like I was saying, if your player characters, if your players and the, you know, don't mind that their player characters um, have this kind of total freedom of action, if they like that kind of thing, that's a feature. It, it's a bug, though, if your player characters, or rather if your players, are going to be upset that their player characters are not going to, you know, that they don't have a, um, a central guiding purpose in the context of what's going on, right? Like this is one of the, it's like one of these movies that is just, you know, it's full of violence and it doesn't necessarily um, – have any kind of a message to it it's it's not very not specifically all that allegorical it's just you know it's just like war is hell that's the that's the whole theme of the plot right <laughs> so you know how horrible is this right that sort of thing um and if that if that can appeal to your group then it might be good if not it's probably not one of the ones that are worth your time i've reviewed quite a lot of this batch so far and there's still a few more to go and there are some books that are really um fascinating and interesting and some that are that are okay and acceptable and and then there are some you know this one again it's not i'm not saying it's a bad adventure i'm just saying this one has to be you have to be within a very very particular set of conditions for you to find this book the ideal book which is basically you'd have to be playing whether in lamentations or something else a campaign set in the 17th century to start with for it to be like absolutely ideal, right? If you don't have, don't want to have to do any conversion or anything, you have to be uh, playing with the type of group that would like this, the kind of way this adventure plays out, both in the sense of the style of play, right? Like um, a very open sandbox to the point that your players could just say, yeah, fuck it. We're not going to do anything. We're going to go over there. We're going to just let this play out and watch, you know, and nothing else. Right. That that's an option. They can of course interfere, uh, but they have no, there's no absolute compulsion that they have to interfere, you know? Um, and it has to be something where your player characters are cool with adventures that are purely about human conflict and have, zero fantasy magical weirdness or supernatural element within it you know um so it seems to me like you know sometimes i've i've said this in a previous video that sometimes lamentations um seems to be because of stuff that has worked for them of course but it seems that sometimes they they're uh, with successive products moving more and more into a particular corner of a particular niche you know and it's like makes me wonder i mean i guess it appeals to the fan base right if you're a huge fan of lamentations it's a good chance you could like this book right but it seems like they're they're becoming less and less concerned about making products that will have broad spectrum appeal 
Anyways, Meatball is on top of the books now, and I've said what I had to say. So I guess that that, uh, that more or less closes things up. Again, if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button. Um, you can subscribe if you haven't subscribed and share this, this video anywhere you think people find this review interesting, uh, whether because of the book itself or because of my, my general commentary. Um, I don't think anybody will be particularly offended by this book. Maybe some really diehard Lamentations fans will think I'm dissing them too much or something. I'm not. That's not the point. But uh, whatever. Share the video anywhere you think it, that, that it'll have a reception. And uh, check out No Rest for the Wicked if you think it fits. I can't even show it to you now because Meatball's on top of it. But if you think it fits your style, if not, well, you've been forewarned, right? And then you can check out some of their other books. And of course, you can check out my books, you know, stuff like World of the Last Sun. If you want some medieval authentic adventures, here's the Old School Companion. It has 26 different medieval authentic adventures, all based on medieval history, folk folklore, myth, or legend. Most of which, you know, there are some that get that, that tend to have little, you know, bits that are specific, of course, to playing in like England in the 15th century. But a lot of them are very easy to convert to a to a your own home setting, a fantasy setting or whatever, you know. So uh, if you're looking for something that's more easily convertible to your particular home setting, check out the Old School Companion too. And uh, I guess that's everything for today. I'm not currently smoking anything because as I'm talking, I'm, I'm doing some cooking in the kitchen. So <laughs> we'll see you next time.